Good morning, everyone. So good to see you here. Welcome to those who are on the live stream joining us. We're going to open with a, a great song. So if you're able and you're able to stand with us, please do so as we uh, kick things off this morning. Community Church, you're so glad you're here. You might notice if you look around that some people are shorter this week than we normally have in the room. This is what we are wanting to, we are calling our FX Sunday, our Family Experience Sunday. And we're going to do them on every fifth Sunday because it's really important to us that as a community, we spend time together. There are things that the kids can learn by watching all the rest of you worship. And honestly, there are some things you can learn by watching the kids worship. So we want to just do this together. And because it's a family service, we want to make it fun. So we're going to start out with a game. And for this game, I need you to have one parent and one child. I need three sets of those. So you and your child, three sets of those. I need volunteers, you and your child willing to come up and play a game with me. 
Do I have someone? One parent, one child. Oh, come on. You can do it. Oh, I've got one right there. I've got one right there. Woohoo! I got one more. Come on, parent, child. Oh, I got one right here. Yay. All right. Come on. Come on. Oh, I got four. That's fine. Come on. We'll play with four. I have a game, Alex. <laughs> <laughs> Look at them now. They're all scared to come on stage. I've got one, two, three, four. I got four. I got four. We just need one pie, but I am going to need. We're going to need another. Two more garbage bags, one more roll of toilet paper, one more spoon, one more hat. Go, go. Oh, I need games. I love having minions. All right, let me explain how this is going to work. So, oh, and a. You know what? This would be easier if you two just went and sat down. Oh. Never mind, Alex. I'm sending you two away. Never mind, Alex. Wherever you are. Sorry. Someone find Alex. Tell him I, I fired a team. All right, come over here. Oh, I love that it's all girls. This makes me so happy. This makes me so, so happy. I've changed my mind, Alex. I fired a team. I fired a team. <laughs> all right. So this is how it's going to work. We're talking about building faith at home. And generally speaking, parents instruct their children at home. They teach them how to do all the things that they need to do. But today, the children are going to instruct the parents. Woo! So we are going to blindfold the parents, and the parents are going to have to accomplish a task by listening to the instructions of their children. So we'll see how they go. So if you would blindfold the parents, Alex, how all the parents. Do you still trust so me? The, <laughs> you're going to have to, now kids, you're going to have to accomplish the tasks in order. So your parent is going to have to find a roll of toilet paper somewhere out here. When they bring that back, they have to wrap it around you 10 times. Then they have to go find a hat and bring it back and put it on you. Then they have to go find a spoon and bring it back, and you can hold it up. Now, the first parent to accomplish all of those things is going for the pie. The first parent to get the pie can put the pie in anyone else's face that's on the stage that's wearing plastic. Plastic. Yes, we're going to put plastic on everybody. Alex, do it, please. Don't do it, Alex. All right, everybody, here's your little smocks. Go ahead and put this on. Here's a little smock. <laughs> she says, all right, I got to get my jacket off. You guys are going to win, though. I feel like it. <laughs> poor communicator. That's awesome. Is your communication skills okay? This isn't texting, by the way. You got to use words, not your phone. All right. Uh, I got you. Yeah, help my mom. Help your mom. There you go. My mom so she'll be there. Bag. And then... There's a plastic bag over my head. Well, you know, youth ministry at its finest. Oh, you need, you need help here. We can tell that your communication skills here are going to win. Here we go. All right, we're almost ready. There's so no fun. hole in this one. All right. Alex, deploy. Oh, you got... Is there someone missing one? Oh, there we go. That's where it goes. Is this the one with the hole? No. Maybe. Yes. Are all, all our this parents one has a hole. our parents are blindfolded? That's good. All right. Arms. Okay. There should be an arm here, and there should be an arm there. All right. Our bumper people. <laughs> let's go. keep them from falling. Excellent. Excellent. <laughs> yeah. All right. Are we ready? Oh, I'm ready. To watch. All right, let's move our parents over here and our children. Let's make sure you two are Not here. yet. You two come down here a little bit. Every time we're from different directions. You guys are here in case they, you know, yeah. try to. Yeah. We, <laughs> we do. We have bumpers to keep can, you from falling off. Here. People will push you back onto the stage. <laughs> okay. Remember, toilet paper. And then some sort of spatula, spoon, doohickey. On your mark, get set, play the music. Go! Straight. All right, you guys, got, you can't walk with a... Toilet paper. Got, Everyone oh, needs oh, a toilet oh, paper. Oh, 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 oh. 
Toilet paper. Find the toilet paper. paper. Once you get the toilet paper, bring it back and wrap your child. Wrap your child. Where, where, where? You can help. Children, you can help them wrap. <laughs> there it is. There we go. Wrap your child. Get wrap it. your child. You got to you wrap, wrap your child the with the paper. toilet paper. No, I wrap her. Yeah, you wrap her. Yeah. <laughs> there it is. Man, this is some fine art. Ten times. Masterpiece. Ten times. You got to wrap ten times. All right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, oh, yeah. It stays there. I'm not going to fall off that. No, you're good. You're good. I got you. Parent is wrapping child. Parent wraps child. Oh, no. Parent wraps you child. Have to count. Parent wraps child. Oh, oh, oh. There it is, there it is. Oh, there it is. Oh, oh. All right, have her sit. Once you got all your pieces, then you go for the pie. Go for the pie. Someone runs. Go for the pie. Keep going, keep going. Go for the pie. Keep going. Once you got all the pieces, go for the pie. Not you, your mom. <laughs> it's the pie. It's my favorite part. Oh dang. The oh, pie. No. No, 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 Commitment. It's, you're done. Sorry. Yes. Yeah, one, two, one. Good. Sorry. <laughs> Music. You have power now. All right. Thank All you, right, kidlets guys. and parentlets. Yep. You guys can take off nice your work. Folds. Good this work. This is the beauty of the chart. Just throw it over yes, there. Yes. Yes. <laughs> All right, guys. <laughs> All right. That is usually traditionally a dad and son activity. I am super impressed by the mother-daughter power on the stage. Nice work. Yeah, I got it. Okay. Mostly dads and sons volunteer for the dumb stuff. Do not fall off the stage even now. <laughs> okay, making me worried. All right, well, good morning and welcome. I hope you grabbed one of these when you came in. While the kids are all heading back, we just want to talk a little bit about our announcements for today. Uh, we also have, hi, live stream people, good to see you. We have um, a touchless program, which you can access on our website. Or if you're in the room and you don't want a program in your hand, we have a touchless program, uh, a little QR code that you can, you can do. But if you grab a program, you're going to get one of these, which is our June events reminder. So you can take it home, put it on your fridge, and then you will not forget that we have an annual meeting on the 12th or that we're doing our dads, grads, and baptism service on the 19th. These are big, important things. And that the youth have a lake day on the 25th, and Foundations is happening on the 27th. So you can pin this on your fridge, remind you that you don't want to miss Nightlight every Wednesday. You don't want to miss the fact that the kids are now divided. Our youth group has divided. That's awesome. We have so many kids that we've broken them into senior and junior high. So senior high meets on Tuesdays at 6.30, and the middle school meets on Thursdays, where they have been at 6.30. So if you have a child in that age group, that's where they go. Lots of fun stuff happening. I'm going to trust that you are going to look at this on your own and figure out what's going on. I do want to draw attention to baptism, because we only do those a couple of times a year. So if you think maybe this is your next step, and you're not sure... We have a class. If you do want to be baptized, you do need to take the class. But even if you're just thinking, hey, 
I don't know anything about baptism. Maybe it is my next step. You can come to the class. There's no obligation to get baptized if you come to the class, but we just want you to have all the information so that the class is on June 15th at 6.30, and the baptism service will be on the 19th. And again, if you miss that one, if you're thinking, hey, that might be my next step, we don't have another one until December. So I just want to make sure you know so that you don't miss it, because a lot of times people come up like two weeks after we've had the service and say, I think I'm ready to be baptized, and then it's like deflating to have to wait all the way till December. So just be thinking about it. If this might be your next step, just come to the class. Figure out if it is or not. All right, so I think that that's all the announcements that we're going to do. We are very excited. We're going to have worship and communion. And the kids in Creek Kids have been work, working on a worship song. They want to lead you in the motions. So grown-ups, this is an awesome chance for you to be a kid again. This is an awesome chance to not care about what people are doing around you and to just embrace the moment and do the motions. So the kids are going to come lead us. Everyone who's in Creek Kids, come up here with me. Creek Kids people, all of you who've been practicing... Or not practicing, I don't care. <laughs> All the way up here, come up here on the stage. Right up here. Hi, come up here. I'm so excited. All up here, right over here in front of Trina. We are very excited. And grown-ups, I expect you to be participatory. Yay! Hmm? Oh, apparently you have to stand. Come up. It's very exciting when the little people can teach us something. So we're super excited. <laughs> All right. We got everyone up here that wants to be up here. <laughs> All right. We're ready. I know a place where we can go To lay the troubles down eating your soul I know a place where mercy flows Take the stains, make you whiter than snow Like a tide, it is rising up Deep inside a current that moves And makes it come alive Living water that brings the dead alive From dusty roads into paradise. paradise All of my dirt, all of my shame Drown in the streets that'll make me born again Like a tide, it is rising up Deep inside a current that moves And makes it come alive Living water that brings the dead alive Washed by the water, washed by the water, and rise up in 
Good job. Give him, a, give him a round of applause again. Thank you, guys. You know, one of the great things about being a part of a larger community, right? We, our e-groups and our small communities are vital to the church being what the church is. It's, that's our infrastructure. But that supports us getting together once a week and being able to do things that you can't do in somebody's living room that, that just don't work, you know, with a group of, of eight or ten people, right? And that's to celebrate like this, that we can have fun, we can laugh, we can make noise, we can let the kids lead us. These are things that are deeply important to a well-rounded spiritual community. You know, there's, there's another aspect to that too, and that's so from, from, the, from the fun to the more sublime to the more reflective. And uh, we thought this would be really good to kind of experience both ends of that spectrum together as families, where we can, we can have the fun. At the same time, we can also stop and reflect. And so this is really important for you boys and girls, for the youngers in the room to remember that it's okay sometimes too to, to slow down a little bit, to be still for a few minutes and to think and to kind of uh, let our hearts speak to us. And we do this regularly with communion in the church. So we're going to do it a little differently today. We're going to create opportunity for families to have communion together. So in whatever family form you're in today, maybe you're here by yourself. That's all right. You're here with your children or it's just a couple. You can kind of form into whatever group you'd like. Find a friend, uh, families. If you want to come together as a, as a family unit and do communion, that's great. We really encourage that. What I'm going to do is, is just read a little bit of an explanation for communion that anybody in the room can understand today. I'm going to just say a brief prayer at the end, and then you're welcome to come up here and take the elements, juice and, and a piece of bread for each person in your group. And then you're going to go back to wherever you're sitting. And you can go back in a corner if you want. You can turn your chairs around so you can face each other. You can do whatever you want to do. And you're going to take those elements whenever you want. Don't wait for me to tell you when to take the bread, when to take the juice. I'm not going to. You're going to decide that together as a group. The band's going to play uh, three songs. So you've got the, that whole time to, to maybe be still. Parents, maybe this is a time for you to talk about what I'm going to share and, and unpack it a little bit for the kids. Kids, this is an opportunity for you to maybe ask questions or tell your parents what you think about communion. It's a chance to pray together. It's a chance to maybe just be quiet and listen to the music and, and maybe sing along. So this is very much kind of a, a do-it-yourself uh, family communion. So I, I'm just going to read a little something here for you, and then the band is going to play, and you are free to come up and get these elements anytime that you'd like. So like I said, this is a kind of an explanation of communion that my hope is anybody can fully understand. Remembering important things keeps us safe and helps us grow. Remembering to look both ways before you cross the street keeps you safe. Remembering to obey your parents helps you grow. The Bible tells us that Jesus gave up everything he had, his whole life, to keep us safe from sin and to help us grow, to be just like him. And Jesus also gave us a very special way to remember what he did. He said that whenever we eat bread and drink juice like this, we should remember that he loved us so much that he gave up his life. He promised that if we remember to obey him, he will keep us safe and make us grow. So we have a chance, all of us quietly, to eat some bread and drink some juice. And while we're being quiet together as families and eating, everybody imagine Jesus. And in your imagination, tell him that you remember what he did. Thank him for keeping you safe and helping you grow. Then wait and see if Jesus says anything to your soul. Let's pray. Good King, we thank you for a day of celebration. A day that reminds us oldsters that there is life that amidst what seems to be decay and destruction, your life finds a way. Thank you. And Lord, we thank you that through your spirit, you are here growing up and instructing the youngsters among us, young in heart and young in, in years, that you are faithful. 
that through your spirit you bring wisdom and knowledge, through the uh, faithful service of mentors, parents, and teachers, instructing the younger among us to grow up in faith. It's with gratitude now that we come to this table and we remember the path of Jesus. And I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. You're free to come and take the elements when you wish. I'm going to be sprinkling in some, some scripture before some of our songs as well. Our first one is Romans chapter 5, 6 through 9. When we were utterly helpless, Christ came at just the right time and died for us sinners. Now, most people would not be willing to die for an upright person, though someone might perhaps be willing to die for a person who is especially good. But God showed his great love for us by sending Christ to die for us while we were still sinners. And since we have been made right in God's sight by the blood of Christ, he will certainly save us from God's condemnation. He's our rescuer. He's our rescuer. We are free from sin forevermore. Oh, how sweet the sound. Oh, how we will praise the Lord, our rescuer. There is good news for the captive, good news for the shamed. There is good news for the one who walked away. There is good news for the doubter, the one religion failed for the good
Matthew 11, verses 28 through 30 say, Then Jesus said, Come to me, all of you who are weary and carry heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you. Let me teach you, because I am humble and gentle at heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy to bear, and the burden I give you is light. From wherever you've been, come broken hearted, let rescue begin. Come find your mercy, O oh sinner, come kneel. Earth has no sorrow that heaven can't heal. Earth has no sorrow that heaven can't heal. your burdens, lay down your shame, all who are broken, lift up your face, oh wanderer, come home, you're not too
Psalm 91 verses one through four says, those who live in the shelter of the most high will find rest in the shadow of the almighty. This I declare about the Lord. He alone is my refuge, my place of safety. He is my God and I trust him for he will rescue you from every trap and protect you from deadly disease. He will cover you with his feathers. He will shelter you with his wings. His faithful promises are your armor and protection. Let the king of my heart be the mountain where I run, the fountain I drink from, oh, he is my song. Let the king of my heart be the shadow where I hide, the ransom for my life, oh, he is mine. Let's sing that again. Let the king let the king of my heart be the mountain where i run the fountain i drink from oh he is my song let the king of my heart
Lord says, I will rescue those who love me. I will protect those who trust in my name. When they call on me, I will answer. I will be with them in trouble. I will rescue and honor them. I will reward them with a long life and give them my salvation. Man, phenomenal, phenomenal. Just leading us to that presence of God is just such an amazing thing. So thank you guys so much. Well, I have a message that God has been putting on my heart for the last couple years, and it became even more important to me uh, this year. And I started to realize that it's actually this week in particular, I started working on it uh, like two, three weeks ago. And then as I was working on it, I revisited it, and then Tuesday happened. And it became even more important. If you don't know what happened on Tuesday, there was a school shooting in Texas. And I just feel like it's necessary for us as a church to pray for them. To pray for those families. To pray for those who are mourning. So I want to encourage you, if you have your kids near you, if you have a friend near you, why don't you guys just get together and we're going to pray for them. How does that sound? God, you are a God of justice, you are a God of love, and you hate evil. And we know that you are mourning with us, you are mourning with those families, you are hurting with them. God, we have a lot of questions, but God, we just ask that you would show up, that you would show up for those families, that you would show up for the teachers, that you would show up for the school, that you would show up for our country in this time, that you would be present and you would give us peace and guidance and wisdom. Pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. God has put a message on my heart of building faith at home. In this last year, it became even bigger of a deal for me because, uh, well, there should be a picture uh, of me and my wife. Yeah, yeah, it's super exciting. I don't know if you look at my face, it's like both scared and excited. It's like I'm terrified, but also really excited. I promise you I am joyful. I am excited for this. But um, uh, yeah, so me and Bree, we're expecting our baby girl in August, August 22nd. Going to have a baby Gelly. And uh, yeah, uh-huh, uh-huh, let's go. That's exciting. And so it just became more important for me as, as I look at this, and as I share with you, uh, I share this with you because I'm not a dad yet. I'm not a dad yet. I'm excited to be a dad. I've done eight years of youth ministry working with kids, and I have, uh, I've been doing a lot of research. So what I'm going to talk to you guys about today is going to be a lot of scripture and then a lot of experts who are smarter than me. 
Does that make sense? <laughs> so it's not a lot of me, it's a lot of Jesus, and it's a lot of people who are way smarter than me. But I wanted to start off with a scripture, and it's a scripture that's going to be core throughout the message, and it's Deuteronomy 6, 4 through 9. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God. The Lord is one. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your might. And these words that I command you today shall be on your heart. You shall teach them diligently to your children and shall talk of them when you sit in your house and when you walk by the way, when you lie down, when you rise, you shall bind them as a sign on your hand and they shall be as frontlets between your eyes. You shall write them on the doorposts of your house and on your gates. We have a duty to the kids in our world. I just got to brag on my wife a bit because um, we started doing this uh, baby registry. Have you heard of this? It's a thing. And, and we, we started to do this baby registry and I'm like, okay, we got to get the crib. We got to get the, the swing. You know, you got to get the fancy swing so the baby doesn't cry. You got to get all that stuff. You got to get the shusher. Did you know there's a shusher? That's a thing. That's a thing. Uh, and you got to get all this stuff. And so I went to the registry, and the first thing my wife put on the registry was this, the toddler Bible, because she gets it. She gets it. This is the first thing that she thought of when we thought we're having a kid. How are we going to show them Jesus? And so I just wanted to brag on her a bit because we have a task, man. We have, we have this, this thing that has been put in front of us that God has given us, that God has gifted us. And I just want to make it clear for those of you guys that don't have kids and you're like, Alex, I'm never going to have kids. They scare me. Uh, I understand. I work with middle schoolers. Okay? I get it. Yes. And we love you, Kendra. We love you. And, 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 but, but I get it. It can be scary. It can be terrifying. But even if you don't have a kid... You still have a duty to the kids that are here at our church. And so, as I got into youth ministry, um, there was this video that really impacted me. And as I become a parent, it's a video that continues to impact me. And I'm hoping that you guys will watch it with me, and then we'll talk about it. So. I was scared, I was confused, I was hurt by the things happening to me and around me as a kid. I genuinely could not fathom a world where I could trust anybody. So fast forward, here I am, 14 years old, and entering my umpteenth foster home. I was a pro, a veteran at this whole sort of getting kicked out of one home, moved to the next, and you meet these people who were like literally complete and total strangers 10 minutes ago, who are now apparently your mom and dad. You know, kids don't take candy from strangers, just move in with them. <laughs> so I'm sitting in the van in the driveway of this next home, and that's when I see Rodney. He's standing up there on the front porch, and immediately I notice this is a large fella. He's six foot five, he's 350 pounds, and as a 14 year old boy, I couldn't help but notice. When he's turned to the side like that, he's shaped like a lowercase b. <laughs> it's amusing now, but in the moment it was tactical. Maybe that's how I could get kicked out of this home. Maybe I could get under his skin about his weight. So I move in with him. I'm being obnoxious. I'm being ungrateful. I'm being just downright rude and mean. I'm setting things on fire. And three years later, I can't shake this guy. Rodney won't kick me out. So I step up my game. I go to the local bank in town. I open up a checking account. I put about 90 bucks in there. Then I proceed to write $10,000 worth of checks. Obviously, checks bouncing one after the next after the next. One check that bounced was for my car insurance. I'm going down the road speeding Stillwater, Oklahoma, 88 miles an hour. No car insurance, no driver's license. I get pulled over, handcuffed, thrown in the back of a cop car, and sent to jail. I call Rodney. 
Like Rodney, I'm in Stillwater. I'm in jail. I'll tell you the whole thing when you get here. Can you please come bail me out tonight? He said, I will come bail you out, but not till tomorrow. Rodney frustratingly believed sometimes one of the most loving things you could do for a kid was allow them to sit in either the success of their wonderful choice or the stupidity of their foolish choice. Next morning, he comes, bells me out, exactly as promised. We have a long, very awkward car ride home. No one says anything. We get back to the house. He's like, we need to sit down and talk. And I knew this moment had finally come. So Rodney, his wife, sent me down to give me the talk I've had a dozen times. He looks in my eyes and says, son, you can keep causing problems. You can keep trying to mess up. You can keep pushing us away. You can keep trying to get us to kick you out of here, but you've got to get it through your thick head, son. We don't see you as a problem. We see you as an opportunity. And in that moment, all my skepticism came to the surface. And I thought, what a cheesy, stupid thing to say to a 17-year-old kid. But then I was overwhelmed with the reality that this guy actually meant it. He didn't see what I was, what was on the surface. The obnoxious kid, the ungrateful kid, the kid getting suspended. He saw what I could be. It was genuinely my turning point. Now, statistically, I am supposed to be dead, in jail, or homeless. But because of one caring adult. I'm not a statistic. Every child who winds up doing well has had at least one stable and committed relationship with a supportive adult. The difference between a statistic and a success story is you. Gets me every time. <laughs> Gets me every time. I understand that not all of us are called to foster care. And for those of you that are, I'm just thankful for you. I'm thankful for you. But maybe you might not be a parent. You might not be a grandparent. You might not be a youth leader. But I guarantee you there's a kid in your life that needs you. That needs you. I have a friend, a mentor, I actually don't really know him, but his name is Reggie Joyner, and uh, he's one of the guys I look up to. And, and Reggie says this, and did the math, and he says that from the birth of a child to graduation, you have 936 weeks. 936 weeks with that kid before they start making critical life decisions. Uh-oh. <laughs> Is it a silver alert? Amber alert? All right. All righty. So you have 936 weeks from the birth of a child to the graduation of a child. So every week matters. Every moment matters. Every hour matters. You see, there's this myth, the myth. And the myth is, and has been for years, that it's your youth pastor's job to teach your kid about Jesus. That's been the myth. And let me ask you just a simple question. How many hours a year does your kid spend in church? I'll answer for you, if you're lucky, 40. 40 hours a year in church. I don't know about you, but I don't know if that's enough. For the kid to radically fall in love with Jesus. If you break that down to monthly, if you're lucky, it's uh, eight times, eight hours in a month. They go to youth group and they go to church on Sunday. If you're lucky. Parents, how many hours in a year do you think you spend with your kids? Significantly more. 
Proverbs 22.6 says, Direct your children onto the right path, and they, when they are older, they will not leave it. It is our job and our duty to show kids the path. And we've all heard stories of young people leaving the church, and you're probably saying, Alex, I know someone who's left the church, and, and I would say, yeah, I've heard them too. I talked to some of them. Some of them are my friends that have, have left the church, and every single time I talk to them, I ask them about their faith conversation with their parents, and they don't have any. Their parents weren't talking to them about Jesus. Instead, what their parents were doing were trying to do behavior mod modification instead of heart transformation. They were trying to change their behavior and not their heart and guiding them to Jesus. There's this book that I uh, really recommend to all parents, all, all youth leaders, anyone who has any connection to students or children. And it's Sticky Faith by Dr. Kara Powell. Uh, Dr. Kara Powell works for Fuller Youth Institute, which is in connection to Fuller Seminary. And she does tons of research on kids and specifically on students who go to college and don't run away from Jesus. She tries to figure out, okay, what's different about these kids and what's different about the kids that do? And it's an amazing book. And one of the big points that uh, Dr. Kara Powell makes is that it's no longer really about one caring adult, but rather five caring adults. The importance of five caring adults in your kid's life. Now that seems scary, that, that can be overwhelming. Uh, they call it the sticky web. Because no matter which direction your kid goes, there's going to be somebody there to show them and guide them to Jesus. And so guess what? You don't want kids? Well, you're not off the hook. Because guess what? I'm having one. And I might want you to be guiding my kid. I know for a fact that my small group, I... I I'm excited, my e-group, I'm excited for them to be a part of my kid's life. I'm excited for them to show my kid the love of Jesus. And so for parents in the room, what I want you to do is just think in your head right now. Who are those five caring adults that you want influencing your kid's life? Some of those people are temporary. Some of them are soccer coaches. Some of them are teachers. Some of them are going to be temporary, but some of them are going to be consistent in your kid's life. They're going to be consistent in your kid's life. 936 weeks. 936 weeks. So my next point is this. If we have 936 weeks, don't miss it. Don't miss it. Don't miss your opportunity. Don't miss your, your opportunity to pour into your kid because guess what? We hope they move out, right? Some of you are like, please, right? Like, I know you. Um, you're like, please move out. In a world that is busier than ever, our work, travel, our supercomputer in our hand distracts us from the most important thing in front of us, and that's our children. I don't care what you have to do. I don't care if you need to literally calendar time for your kid. I calendar time for kids every week. <laughs> like, I, I do that. And, and I don't care if you have to do it too because it is that important. It is that important to take an hour and a half of your time and say, I'm going to invest in a child. I'm going to invest in a kid. I'm going to show them the radical love of Jesus. According to the Search Institute's nationwide study of 11,000 teenagers from 561 congregations, Across six different denominations, 12% of youth have a regular dialogue with their mom on faith or life issues. 12%. And for dads, I didn't even want to put it up there. It's significantly less. Significantly less. That is quite literally one in eight students talking to their parents about faith. One in eight students. AC3, let's be different. Let's not be that. Let's be eight and eight, right? Let's be eight and eight. We need to create time for our students. And when we do that, there's typically a goal that I want you guys to have. The goal is twofold. It's to have fun. It's okay to have fun with your kids. 
have fun with your kids and to talk. You see, I, um, I've worked in the world of therapy before. Uh, I've done that. And it's, it's interesting because they talk about this thing called therapeutic rapport, which is when you're talking to a stranger that you build trust with them. Oftentimes, I talk to uh, uh, my youth leaders about, you know, uh, equity and, and relational equity with your student because you're coming into the life of a student, how are they supposed to trust you? And as a parent, you think they just should. They should just trust me. I mean, I put food on the table. They should just trust me. They don't. <laughs> it takes time for someone to trust you. And it is important to build that relationship with your kids so that, guess what, when hard things happen, because they will, they're coming to you. When hard things happen, they're going to come to you, they're going to turn to you, and they're going to say, hey, I need help. And I would rather them come to you than to their friends. So here we are. We have time with our kids. So what are some questions I can ask, Alex? I don't even know what to talk to them about. Here you go. Write them down if you want. What do your friends say they like about you? What do you wish was different about our family? Do you think our family is too busy, not busy enough, just right? What's your idea of the best day ever? You see, I included one about not family for those of you that are not, you know, related. All right. What is your idea of the best day ever? While these questions don't seem like much, you are, they're setting you up for when the hard conversation comes. Again, building that relational rapport. So, in Psalm 127, verses 3 through 5, it says this. Children are a gift from the Lord. You heard that right. Children are a gift from the Lord. They are a reward from him. Children born to a young man are like arrows in a warrior's hand. How joyful is the man whose quiver is full of them. You guys know how much a quiver full is? That's a lot. That's like 12. I don't really know many people joyful with 12 kids, okay? I, that's a, you know what I'm saying? That's a little scary. Twelve kids. Whoo! Pray for them. Joyful. Sometimes it doesn't feel joyful, right? Sometimes it's really hard. But joyful should we be, AC3? We should be joyful about the screaming kids in the room. We should be joyful about the pies and faces. We should be joyful about the kids running around. I am joyful about the middle schoolers who are serving in Creek kids, taking time to pour into kids younger than them. They lead me. They show me what it looks like to follow Jesus. And we should be doing that for them. So, how do I pour faith into my kid? How do I build faith at home? How do I do all this? Okay, I get it. You're with me. I encourage the use of this thing called the Parent Q app. Parent Q app. And the Parent Q app actually guides you through faith conversations with your kid. You don't even have to come up with it. They do it for you. It's awesome. It's awesome. And one of the, my favorite things about the Parent Q app is this thing, and it's drive time. And I have parents come to me all the time. And they say they have, this, they have a teenager, right? And parents of teenagers, you, you're going to understand what I'm about to say. They're like, Alex, we can't talk to them because they just lock themselves in their room. Okay? They go straight to their room, and they lock themselves in their room. Well, guess what? You drive them places, and they're trapped. Yeah! Here we go! They are trapped, hopefully. And hopefully you're not doing anything else but driving. Yeah, I'm looking at you. All right, and, and, and hopefully you have an opportunity to talk to your kid. Drive time is my favorite thing because they are trapped. You get a chance to talk to them about faith, and maybe they'll give you some weird answer, but eventually they'll give you a real one. And that relationship starts to build. I have the story about one mom that really wanted to have conversations with her 16-year-old kid. 
She wanted to have meaningful conversation with her 16-year-old son. But he was uninterested because, you know, he's 16. <laughs> right? He's uninterested because he's 16. The last thing he wanted to do was spend time talking with her, but he did love movies. So this proactive mom began scanning movie trailers, seeing which one might be the most interesting to watch with her and her son. And hopefully they can talk about it afterwards. Shocker, almost every time she invited her son to the movies, he went. And they talked about it. They had this organic conversation that felt natural that started. There's one last thing I want to emphasize in the don't miss it phase. The last thing I want to emphasize is to share your faith with young people. Have you ever noticed that a toddler repeats everything you say? You got to be really careful, guys. <laughs> yeah, I have, a, I have a nephew, and I'm like, oh, okay. <laughs> got to be really careful not to say things. But anyway, um, they repeat everything. And then they even emulate you. Like, they'll, like, start cleaning. Like, my nephew just cleans. And I'm like, I hope you continue that. You know, I'm like, keep going, man, that's good. But he just cleans because my sister cleans all the time. And he just wants to do what she's doing. So what if, what if your kids saw you praying and started to follow that? What if your kids saw you reading your Bible and so your kids started reading their Bible? What if your kid watched you as you followed Jesus and they said, okay, I want to be like that? You can't give someone something you don't have. And your relationship with Jesus matters more than ever, not only for you, but for your kids. The next thing I want to talk about is that sometimes we have kids who start to get into middle school and preteen years, and uh, they ask us things we'd rather not talk about. It's awkward. <laughs> I know it can be. But my point is that we shouldn't be afraid of hard conversations. Don't be afraid of hard conversations. <clears throat> and we struggle with this, don't we? Like sometimes we would just rather not know. Keep us in the dark. I don't want to know what you're doing. It's better this way. But that can't be the case. We can't be afraid of the hard conversations that we're going to have with young students, with kids, with our kids, with our nieces, with our nephews. We can't be afraid of the hard conversations. We have hard conversations every week at AC3 Youth Group. Every week we're having hard conversations with kids because we realize that that is important, that they need a place where they can talk about these things because guess what? The world is a little messed up and they're living in it. And they need people who love Jesus to guide them and show them the hope in this world. Uh, I love this quote from Sticky Faith. And I think it's just really good for all of us. It's, a good faith conversation doesn't equal convincing your kid that what you believe is best. And a lot of people are going to look at that and say, well, what I believe is best. But what if you could have them ask questions to get to a conclusion of what's best? Students with sticky faith often report that while their parents offered them opinions, they ultimately gave the students some latitude to arrive at their own conclusions. Never explain something to your kid if you can ask a question instead. Let them figure it out. Let them come to their conclusion. Show them how you come to your conclusion and let them come to theirs. Here's my bottom line. Here's, here's, here it is, AC3. This is, this is it. It's our duty to build faith at home. It's our duty to our kids to instill faith in our kids. And if you are involved with some kid, there are kids here that need you, that need people in their lives. And some of you are saying, Alex, I already did that. 
you know, now I'm retired. <laughs> I don't have to worry about kids. Yes, you do. <laughs> it's a biblical commandment to pour into the lives of the next generation, to mentor and to bring up the next generation. So I want to leave you with this. I want to leave you with a challenge. If you got your, uh, what is it, bulletin? Is that what we call it? I don't know what we call it. All right, if you got your thing this, uh, this morning, there was a little uh, slip in there, and it was a challenge for you, and it's drive time challenge. And this is how we do this. So my challenge to you is this. Partner with Creek Kids in the youth group. Whether you have kids in there or not, but especially if you have kids. I've actually gotten emails because, well, I'm having a kid, and uh, Twyla expects me or Bree to serve once a month in Creek Kids. That's part of it. I don't know if you knew that. That's part of it. Like, you, you go in there and you serve in Creek Kids. Again, take advantage of drive time. They're trapped. You have them. See? And then share your faith with your kids and include why you believe what you believe. That will make a lasting impact on your kids. I'm going to pray for us. God, thank you for this opportunity to talk about those that are so precious to you, those that, that you love. And it's our next generation. It's our future. It's the disciples that, that you're calling to us. You've entrusted them to us. We have to be stewards of what you've given us. And God, we want to be. And so, God, I just pray for guidance and that you would speak to us and show us how we could do this. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, Ellen Creek. Often we would do uh, what we call the three-minute rule, but because this is a special Sunday, it's the fifth Sunday, and it's an FX Sunday, we're going to do something a little different. We're just going to dismiss you. You don't have to play the three. Some of you hate the three-minute rule. I know who you... Some of you love the three-minute rule. You're my favorites. But for this week, we're just going to do something different. We're just going to have a brown bag lunch. I see that hand, Mike. What do you want? Yes. Good call. Good call. We'll do that as, as we go. So I'm going to say a prayer. Thanks, Mike, for that prompt, for that family and that child. And then um, we're going to have lunch together out in the lobby. It's a brown bag. Potluck. Oh, is it? Okay, well, you're not going to eat anything I brought because I didn't bring anything. Hope you did. So we're going to pot potluck. <laughs> Welcome to church, man. Pastor doesn't know what a potluck is. All right. Um, <clears throat> Father, we, uh, we pause now as a people and we lift up this circumstance uh, that uh, is underway. We don't know the details. We just know that there's a child that's apparently in danger. And so we pray your presence, your ministering spirit. We pray that you would intervene wherever there is darkness and you would bring light, that you would surround this child with safety, that you would bring her to a place where uh, those who love her and would protect her would be present. We pray that you would intercede on her and her family's behalf to bring them to wholeness. And we trust you with the outcome, Lord. So a blessing and your protection on this child, we pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. All right, you're free to potluck. And uh, we'll see you next week starting a new series, Rediscovering Church. We'll see you then.